This episode is sponsored by Squarespace. Whether you need a domain, website, or online store, make your next move with Squarespace. So I'm going to show you how I process through a big batch of headshots. Say I've been with a company for the day and I've shot 100 people, generated over 2,000 images. This is my little process for bringing the images into Lightroom, making sure that I make the correct selects for those images, and then just make little tweaks and get them into a folder on my desktop so that I can start bringing them into Photoshop one at a time for a custom retouch. On the Photoshop side, the rule for myself when I've got a big batch like this is that I spend no longer than 10 minutes per image on a retouch. And that is just to take out obvious distractions, to make sure that the color and contrast is good, and to ensure that my white background is actually pure white the whole way around. This is actually part two of this video, so if you want to see the first part of my channel, I'll show you the lighting setup I use for these, how I coach people through positioning and looks, all the settings in my camera and that kind of stuff. But if you just want to stick to the retouch, stick with this video and let's dive right in. So we've got all our images in Lightroom. Uh, you can see this is where we sort of start out testing lights. I was showing you a uh, flash sync. Here we're setting up our lights, making sure we have clean edges and building the lights up as we went. And two black cards to check that ambient light wasn't affecting our exposure and a gray card shot. And then we're into the shoot as we go down. So you can imagine here, there's just five people. This was just an example, but you can imagine if you shoot 70 people, sort of 20 images each, then you're gonna wind up with a lot. Uh, on the day. So the first thing I want to do is to get my white balance of everything correct, make sure everything's fine. So I find my gray card shot and I want to open it up, go to develop. And the first thing I'm going to do is just take my little uh, eyedropper tool here and just click on this gray card target and that should snap everything in. You didn't see it change that much, that's because it was pretty much in the ballpark of where it needed to be, so everything's fine. So now what I wanna do is apply this white balance setting to all of the photographs in the shoot. So here's our uh, little thumbnail at the bottom with our gray card and if I dial all the way along to the right, to the very last shot and I hold down shift and click on the last image, I'm gonna select everything in between uh, those. And what I'm gonna do is come down here to sync and it gives me a dialog like this. So already you could have a load of different things. If I'd made a lot of changes to this one, I could sync all the settings across. But all I want selected is white balance because that's the only thing I'm changing. And then I just need to go down here to process version and make sure that that's ticked on. So basically it's gonna take the white balance setting of this image and apply it to all of the rest. Go synchronize and you should see across all of these that little icon appears and we know that then we're in the right place. So the next thing I'm gonna do is to make sure I get the correct selects. So I can see I was shooting here. This is the first person I shot with. And if I move along to the last shot I took with her, I can find her holding the piece of paper. So here we can see she chose 2843. So now all I wanna do is if I mouse over the thumbnails, you can see, look over here, the number actually changes and that's the number of the image. So I just need to mouse over until it's 2843. So if I just select 2843, Three. That's the one she chose and I'm gonna just hit three, the number three, and that's just gonna put three stars on it. And I'm gonna scroll along to the next person, go to the last shot with him and Matt wants 2860. So again, I'm just mousing along until that number changes to 2860. There it is, hit three, and that puts three stars on it. So you can see you can move quite quickly with this, which when you've got a lot of people from a shoot is very, very useful. So Tanya wants 2890, so I'm scrolling back, 2890, there we go. I'm gonna select and hit three, put three stars. And then I'm gonna select the next one. The last image that I shot with her, Andrea wants 2914. So I'm scrolling back along till I get 2914, select it and hit three, put three stars on that one. Scroll all the way along to the last one here and Ben wants 2940. So he wants this one, so hit three there. Now all I need to do is go to filters, go to rated and I've only rated them with three stars, but if you wanted to get specific, there's your three stars. And these are my five selects. So you can see that if I've got a lot of people, sort of, you know, a hundred plus people, it's not gonna take me too long to make the selects for this. And I can just plow through and get it all done. Now in Lightroom, I'm not gonna do too much. Most of the work will be in Photoshop, but I do just wanna make sure that I've got all the detail that I want. Because this is a raw file, I might have blown this to white uh, on the back of my screen, but it won't be white now because it's obviously trying to rescue detail. 
And I'm not gonna worry about this here in Lightroom, I'm gonna do that later in Photoshop. But here, usually what I do is just to make sure that I'm not blowing, and I'm looking at the skin, I'm not paying attention to the background, I'm pulling some of the whites back because it's looking a little bit hot, and I might just bring the exposure back. This will mean that I'm affecting this uh, background and I'm taking it away from white, but like I said, we'll, we'll fix that later in, in Photoshop. And I really just am looking for uh, my exposure and making sure skin tones are looking good. And the only other thing I'll do is to just hit lens correction just to take any distortion from the lens. So again, very, very quickly, this one's slightly hot, bringing it back a touch and maybe just pulling the whites back on that skin a little bit, coming down and making sure my profile correction is good. Again, this one's slightly hot, so I'm dialing it back just a smidge and uh, somewhere there and I'm just going to pull the whites down a touch for that skin making sure it's not too hot again coming down and hitting uh, lens correction two more to go and you can just see uh, you don't want to spend a lot of time in this because most of the time you're going to spend with this technique is going to be in Photoshop so uh, this is just literally making sure I've got all the detail that I need and all the dynamic range that I need and I'm not losing anything so each one just lens correction and just just tweaking the exposure just a little bit and that looks good. Okay, so we're in Photoshop. I pulled in one of the images. This is the one we're gonna work on. Uh, the whole thing with headshots like this is you're just not gonna have the time to do high-end retouches. So I'm gonna crack through this as fast as possible. Um, if there are things you don't understand the technique, you'll just have to Google them because I just wanna show you the speed at which you should be moving to get through these. And obviously I've been doing this for a little bit, so I might move faster than you, but just to show you the kind of things I cover and the sort of pace and time I'll do it. So say we start the clock right about now. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is to create a new layer, solid color layer, and I'm gonna make sure that it's pure white. Uh, six Fs is what it's gonna be to make sure that you're pure white the whole way through. And then I'm gonna duplicate my bottom layer and just drag it above. This is gonna be the way that I'm gonna make sure that the whole background is pure white, because this might look pure white at the moment, but it's actually not, and I'll show you that in a minute. So let's sort out the the white first. Uh, what I'm gonna do is just hit my mask button to create a mask and then I'm gonna just zoom out a little bit and make sure that my brush is on 100% and X changes me to black. So now what I'm doing, just to turn these off so I can see through on the back layer. I just wanna delete just sort of around. This is a very quick and dirty way. Like I said, I, I just haven't got the time to you know, be creating individual masks for each and this is just a very, very simple way to be able to make sure that everything around is gonna be pure white. All right, so I've just very loosely, and you've got sort of a fade in there because I'm using a very soft brush. Now I can turn my white layer on the background. Now, this won't be, uh, this will be pure white over here, but where it starts to bleed in, it'll actually be a gray. So what I'm gonna do is create a levels layer. I'm gonna hold down Alt, and I'm gonna drag from the, from the right-hand side. Can you see there, if I hold down Alt, you can see what is actually uh, blown to white and what isn't. So you can see where it is becoming a problem there. And I wanna drag just to the left until I get a nice clean silhouette. So that is good there. So now I know that everything surrounding that is going to be pure white, but it's made my skin a bit hot. So all I'm gonna do is come back and just with that mask selected and a black brush, I'm just gonna paint back that those highlights on the face. So now I have, I know that I've got uh, pure white all the way around. I've got a nice clean uh, outline on him and I painted back those highlights. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is healing brush, so new layer. I'm gonna go to healing brush very, very quickly. This is not a beauty retouch at all. I'm just going to alt select and just take out anything. And my general rule for retouching like this is anything that won't be there in two weeks on the skin comes out. So I'm not, you know, sort of making someone look perfect. I'm not working at a poor level or anything like that. I'm just taking out anything on the skin that won't be there in two weeks. That's, that's my sort of rule for myself. So I'm not changing the face, I'm not taking out moles, I'm just taking out blemishes and distractions. So uh, let me do a bit of a better job on that one. And that for the level we are working is looking pretty good. And maybe just this one as well. And then, then you can see as we're going, so the skin looks super natural uh, as is, but just taking out those little blemishes. Next thing I want to do 
is I don't like to skin smooth, but what I do instead is I selectively sharpen the features so that when I sharpen the features in comparison to the rest of the skin, the skin will feel smoother, but I'm actually working backwards. So what I'm gonna do is hit Command, Alt, Shift, and E, which is gonna stamp visible, take everything that I've done and put it above. Easiest way to sharpen is to come here to Filter, go down to Other and High Pass. And basically what I'm gonna do here is with this gray layer, I'm just dialing in until I can see nice clean edges around things, but before you push it too far like this and you start to get haloing. So if I dial this to around 2.1, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to uh, just come here to adjustments and desaturate that layer because there is some color information in this layer. I'm gonna come down here to overlay. Okay, and that is gonna sharpen everything up. If you look here, if I turn this layer on and off now, you can see that it sharpened it, but it's also sharpened the skin. So all I'm gonna do is put a mask on that layer, hit Command I to turn it all black, uh, grab my brush, and just with it on 100% and a soft brush, I'm just gonna paint in the features on these. So I'm sharpening, I'm selectively sharpening features I want. I'm gonna do it with the mouth, just the nostrils on the nose, maybe a little bit on the stubble, and I'm gonna bring the hair back in as well. So now I haven't softened the skin, but I have sharpened the features in comparison to the skin, which is gonna give uh, that sort of effect of, of making the features pop in comparison. Okay, next thing I'm gonna do is hit uh, a curves layer, and this is just for the eyes now. Without adjusting the actual curve, I'm gonna change the blending mode of the curves layer to screen, and that's gonna turn everything too bright. I'm gonna hit Command I to invert the mask. I'm gonna grab my brush, and I'm going to come into the iris on the eye, bring this down, I'm gonna bring my flow to 3%, just very, very light so I can layer this on. And just so that it's slightly smaller than this, this iris here, I'm just going to paint in a touch here. This is a very, very quick and dirty eye edit. Okay, if I turn this on and off, you can see what that's done, it's just brightened it. Now, this is something that you can absolutely overdo. You should never be able to see that. I can see I've overcooked it. So all I'm gonna do is bring this here and I'm gonna dial it up to sort of about 40% there. Make sure you can never see this. It just starts looking incredibly fake and you can give people cat's eyes and it looks bizarre. Um, so now what I'm gonna do quickly is dodge and burn for shape. So I'm gonna grab another curves layer. I'm gonna do exactly the same again, screen, which is gonna brighten everything up. This is just another way to dodge and burn. I'm gonna hit Command I to get rid of all that. Grab my brush and bring it right up. And now I'm gonna just bring some shape to the face. So I'm going to uh, just brighten this forehead a little bit. It's on 3% flow so I can paint it in as I go. Again, less is more with this on the bridge of the nose, on the triangle of the cheeks as well, just to bring out some of that shape, just on the chin here and then just on this bottom lip here, and maybe just on that top piece there as well, and just brighten this highlight on the back. Okay, now you can see it's too much, turn it on and off, but you can see what that's doing. I'm gonna bring this back down and dial it up to 50 maybe. And I really do just feel these out as I go. Curves, this is my burn layer, multiply, and Command I to get rid of it, and I'm gonna do exactly the same again, just paint this in, and I'm just gonna paint in the shadows on the face. So just down this bridge of the nose here, underneath the nose. This just creates a little more shape in the light as well. I'm just on the opposite side. And I'm gonna darken down the shirt a bit. I don't want this neck distracting the skin. I don't want the shirt distracting. So if I turn this on and off, you can see it's just sort of tucked everything in a little bit in terms of the tones. So that looks good, taking it to about 60%. Next thing I wanna do is grab uh, my color balance layer, and this is just to add a bit of color contrast. So if I go to shadows, and you can use this little formula, if you do three and then minus three, so I'm adding three on the blues and minus three on the cyans into the shadows, and then for my midtones, I'm doing the opposite. I'm adding minus three for yellow and three for red. Now, what that's done is it's pushed warmer tones into the midtones and cooler tones into the shadows. And if I turn this layer on and off, you can see it's just added a bit of contrast to that layer. Uh, which isn't actually contrast, it's lost detail, it's color contrast. So it's just like a visual trick of the eye. Um, next thing I'm gonna do is grab a curves layer and this is where I'll actually edit like a normal curves layer, just a, a slight shallow S curve and I'm being very, very careful here not to blow my skin tones. So just a shallow curve, just to bring a little contrast in. I wanna also add some edge contrast and the way that I do that is to, again, Command, Alt, Shift and E and I'm going to go to image, that's just stamped a visible layer above, and on that layer I'm gonna turn it to black and white. I'm going to bring my reds to the left, and you watch what this does in terms of contrast in the skin, and my yellows 
to the right. It just creates a nice sort of contrast through the image. Uh, you can play with others, but to be honest, there were very little colors in here anyway. So I'm gonna go OK, and I'm gonna change this blending mode to soft light. Okay, it's way too strong, so I'm just bringing this back, but just watch what this does. As I dial this up, you can see it just brings a bit of crunch to the image and makes it pop uh, in terms of sort of edge contrast. So I probably only want about 10% of that, but if I turn that on and off, you can see it's just brought a nice bit of contrast in there. It's looking a touch saturated for me, so I'll probably go saturation and minus five, just to dial back that saturation a touch. And I'm going to, at this stage, just before I finish off, I'm gonna make sure my crop is good. And I'm just giving, I usually just put this sort of just below the eyebrows, this third here, just below the eyebrows. And uh, there we go, something, something like that. Maybe actually I'm gonna bring it up a touch. So I'll put this actually on the eyebrows. I wanna give it a little bit of headroom. And I will give the client this as is, then they can square crop and do whatever else they want with it. But I know that that will work. And the last thing I wanna check is just to create a levels layer above and exactly the same again, hold down Alt, grab my right node here for my highlights and just make sure that everything outside, you can see there's a little bit of fringing in here. So all I'm gonna do is just dial it till that disappears, bang, gone. And now I know that everything outside is white. He's got good skin tone, I haven't blown anything out and that's looking pretty good. The last thing that's bugging me and I've just noticed this now, normally I do a little bit more cleanup on the clothes, perhaps he's got some dust spots but I'm gonna leave that for time's sake and I'm gonna go Command, Alt, Shift, E, another stamp visible layer above. And the last thing I'm gonna do is come up here to filter and liquefy, just cause there's this uh, odd bulge in the back of his shirt here, uh, which is just the way the material was lying and just making sure it's on nudge and making sure the brush is about the size of the actual bulge I'm correcting. I'm just gonna tuck this in a little bit. It's very, very key when you're doing stuff like this to not get into too much of a flow that you miss the details that are unique to each person. So just with those little tweaks there, that looks pretty good to me. So we've basically gone from, uh, let's have a look here, from this, to this nice subtle edit, just cleaned everything up and tweaked it. You could take out this hair here, you could take out a bunch of other little stuff, you could sort of clean this up a little bit. But to be honest, for a headshot edit, this is probably good and I'm done. So I would just go save as, and I would have remembered the name from our um, uh, Lightroom because he sort of held his piece of paper up. I can't remember his surname right now, but I know it was Ben. So let's call this Ben Final and JPEG, full quality, save and 12 maximum quality and okay. And that is our headshot retouch. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode. If you need a new website or a domain, they really are a great option, especially for photographers. The biggest issue for me is that my images look great on site, no matter where people are viewing them from. So I load up quite a good size file so that if someone views it on a big screen, they still look great. But my worry was with that big file size, if someone's just flicking through on a mobile phone, will my website run really slowly? But what Squarespace has done is when I initially load up that file, it auto generates smaller versions of that file and then serves up the correct file size depending on the platform that people are viewing my website on so that my website runs fast and responsive and my images still look great. Start your free trial today at squarespace.com and go to squarespace.com forward slash Sean Tucker to get 10% off your first purchase.